Okay, so what we're going to do now is talk a little bit more formally about the idea of degrees and neighbors in a graph. So what we're going to do is formally define the idea of the neighbors of a vertex. Neighbors of a vertex. So we briefly discussed the fact that the degree of a vertex is the number of edges incident with that vertex. In other words, it's the number of neighbors. So let's be a little bit more precise. We're going to say that this is n sub g of v. This means the neighbors of the vertex v in the graph g. And this is equal to the set of all vertices u. So u is a vertex of the graph such that u v is an edge of the graph. So really we're just being a little bit more precise instead of using we're using mathematical notation to really say what we mean here if this is vertex V and in the graph there are these edges like this I don't know maybe there's more edges out here but that doesn't matter for V maybe this stuff does this and let's call this um, U1, U2, U3 u4 and u5. Now we should be able, this is vertex v right here, and so we should be able to figure out easily this is the graph g, the neighbors in g for vertex v is the set of these vertices such that we have an edge in the graph between v and that vertex. So that works for vertex u1, u2, not u3 because there is no edge between v and u3, uh, u4 is next and u5. So that is the set of neighbors for vertex v. And we also write d of v which is the degree of v and that's just the size of this set of neighbors which is what we talked about before. So in this case it's 4. We can easily see that v, the vertex, has degree 4 because it has 4 neighbors. And here they are. I'll color them in pink. So the four neighbors are colored in pink. Now, we should formally define what we mean by maximum degree and minimum degree while we're at it. So we can formally define these like this. The minimum degree of the graph is equal to the minimum of the set of all possible degrees for the vertices in the graph. So it means exactly what we think it does. This is the minimum degree, which means you look at all the vertices in the graph, find out their degrees, and the minimum of that is your answer. And similarly, the maximum degree is going to look very similar to this. It's just going to be the maximum over that set. D of V and V is in G. This uh, sort of vertex coloring motivates a basic idea for how to determine whether or not a graph is bipartite. So what I want to do is show this idea using a nice simple example and then I'll say it in full generality. So here let me just draw um, some basic graph. Maybe I'll just draw this little path like this. Okay, so this is a nice little path. It's P4. And the idea is if you want to determine whether or not a graph is bipartite, so the question is bipartite or not, what you can do is you can just pick a vertex. So you first of all you're going to use only two colors. So start from any vertex. Start from any vertex. V1, let's call it, and color it color 1. You're only going to use two colors. Now you have to color the neighbors, all the neighbors, we just discussed what those are, of V1 with color 2. You can sort of see intuitively what you're trying to do here. What you're trying to do is build the two partite sets to see whether or not this is actually bipartite. And one partite set will be one color and the other partite set will be the other color. But you don't stop there. You have to continue this. So you have to proceed
by coloring. I'll just scroll down here a little bit. So proceed by coloring all the neighbors of an already colored already colored vertex with the opposite color. Okay, so first of all let's just try that on this little graph and then I'll explain what happens. So I'll use some green as my color one. Actually that might be confusing because I wrote there. So I'm going to write color one is blue and my color two will be yellow for this example. Okay, so I'm going to start with any vertex and it doesn't matter which one so let me just start right here randomly sort of in the center. So that's my vertex V1 and I color it color 1. So now I look at the neighbors of V1. Maybe I'll just write down that this is V1. Now I look at the neighbors of V1 and I see that it has two neighbors, this one and this one. Okay, now I have to proceed. I have to look at a vertex that's already colored and color its neighbors the opposite color. So if I choose this vertex on the end, it's already colored and its neighbors are already colored the opposite color. It's finished. If I look at this vertex, that's the one I started with, so if I go to the next one, this one has already been colored and I look at all of its neighbors and I realize that there's still some coloring to do. And I just color this one in. And this, hopefully you can see, is a pretty simple example. Now we've finished the procedure. And we could, in fact, draw this graph in a slightly different way. And then maybe it's more recognizable as being bipartite. I've put one of the partite sets over on this side and the other one over on this side. And now we can see that this path goes from a yellow to a blue, back to a yellow, and back to a blue. So this is, in fact, a bipartite graph. So what you should really take away from this is that if the whole graph can be colored without contradiction in the way we just did, then it is a bipartite graph. And otherwise, at some point you're going to get to a place where one of the vertices gets both colors. And that will mean it's not bipartite. So maybe I'll just write that down as well. So if it's bipartite, If it is bipartite, then we can complete this coloring with no contradiction. No contradiction. Just like we did up here. So this one was indeed bipartite. However, if it is not bipartite, then at some point, at some point, a vertex will get both colors. So that will be the problem. And let's just take a look at an example for which that happens. In fact, just up here we had an example that was not going to work out. So let's try it. Let's say blue is our color one still. So we start coloring with vertex V. And I'll just make it nice and fat there so we can see. Now we go ahead with color two, which is yellow. And we say, OK, we'll color all of the neighbors a vertex V with that color yellow. And now we're going to run into a bit of a problem. Well, if we chose the, um, the vertex U down here, we wouldn't have a problem. We would just go ahead and say, OK, um, here we have a vertex U, and its neighbors are opposite color from it. But if you choose another vertex, such as vertex U2, this is proceeding with a vertex that's already been colored. 
it says that we need to color its neighbors in a, the opposite color. So it's colored yellow, which means that everything that's a neighbor to it must be blue. So we have to color this neighbor blue, and that's no problem, and this neighbor blue, it's already blue, but right here we're going to have to color this neighbor blue, and that's the problem. So this one here is not bipartite. And if you think about it for a little bit, you can use this technique to actually show, you can show that a cycle, so a cycle on n vertices is bipartite if and only if n is even. In other words, you can show that when n is even, it is bipartite, and if n is odd, it is not bipartite. So I encourage you to try showing this using this technique.